Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Please stand as you are able. Well, it is uh, great to see everyone both uh, here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. For those on Zoom, you'll notice a little difference uh, this morning. We only have one camera. Um, our second camera decided to go out this week. So, you know, why not, right? <laughs> so you might see a little transition stuff there, but uh, glad to have everyone with us this morning. Our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 3 of your bulletin or page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the one holy and living God, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. morning. Is this working? The first reading is from the book of Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Psalm 71 is found on page 6 of your bulletin. 
we will read this responsibly. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked. For you are my hope, O Lord God. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians, verses 13, or chapter 13, verses 1 through 13, which can be found on page 6 of your bulletin. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, And if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For We know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue at Nazareth. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you do in Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heavens was was shut up for three years and six months. There was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except for a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except for Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all the synagogue was filled with rage. They got up, drove them out of the town, and led them to the brow of a hill on which the town was built 
so that they may hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. From our reading this morning from 1 Corinthians, Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it's great to be here be here with everyone this morning as we uh, gather not only for that for this fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, still in this Epiphany season where we uh, see and share new ways that God is breaking into our world, but we also gather as Christ's Episcopal Church after this service in our annual meeting. And I love these readings. I love especially this 1 Corinthians reading as we gather in our annual meeting, as we reflect on the year past and look forward to New Year's coming forward. We hear this passage about love. Now, we all know this passage pretty well, right? Either it's it's been read at one of the weddings you went to, or maybe even at your own wedding if you're married. We all know it very well, and we all kind of have this personal connection to it. But what's interesting, and it's it's a great reading for weddings, I think if I didn't go back and look, Sorry, Sherry, but I think it was one of ours. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was one of ours. <laughs> but I should know those things, but, uh, but you know, <laughs> that was a long time ago. But we, we internalize these, and we, we think that they're about us personally. But really, it's a more of a corporate phrase, more of a corporate sentence and paragraphs, chapter. Because Paul sends this as as part of Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, to the entire church. It wasn't Paul's letter to Brian and Sherry who are going to get married, but it was a letter to the church talking about the power of love, the love of a community built out of the love of God, the love that God gives us and how we are to share that. I love that part there, especially during these uh, last two years. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. I don't know about you, but as I reflect, we've endured a lot, haven't we? Both individually and corporately. I mean, look at just all the different ways we are doing church today. I mean, we have probably half of the congregation online, sitting at home, watching on Zoom, worshiping with us on Zoom. We never would have thought that three years ago, two and a half years ago, actually two years ago as of today, because it was in March that we finally started going on Zoom two years ago. But we have endured because we know that God's love flows through us. We have endured through so much because we are filled with God's hope. We know that God is with us through all of this. That is the hope that God shares with us. And whether it's during a time of a pandemic or a personal crisis, we know that God's love remains. God's love is with us in so many different ways. And I think we have endured, not, you know what, we have not endured. We have thrived during this time. I mean, if you look at our numbers, our numbers are up. We have more people uh, participating in our services. We have this, this year in stewardship, we're like 20% higher than last year. I've been ordained 19 years. I have never had a 20% increase in stewardship in one year. We have like 15 new members that have pledged. We have not endured. We have thrived. And that's just the numbers. We can see the community around us 
working out and giving out in so many wonderful ways. Yes, love endures all things, but if we stay with that love, if we walk in that love, things thrive, and we are thriving here at Christ Episcopal Church. The question I have for you is, are you personally thriving as well? Where are you in all of this? Because these last three weeks, we've heard a lot from 1 Corinthians, haven't we? We have heard that we all have gifts to share in the, li in the living out of Christ's word in our community. We all have those gifts. They're different gifts. Last, year, last week we heard that there is one body but many parts. Remember that? The eye can't say to the foot, I have no use of you. What body part are you within this larger church? Because you know what? We're not the same without you. Christ Episcopal Church is a different church without you. It takes every single one of us. And as one needs to leave or uh, moves on, we change, don't we? As others come in, we change. Luckily, we're a very flexible um, body, if you will. I think of the um, Incredibles. Remember, uh, the, the wife was uh, uh, flexible and, and went everywhere. Well, that's kind of that body of Christ that is Christ Episcopal Church. We are flexible. We bend, but we are one. And we are one because of you. So today as we gather, both at the annual meeting, but today as we gather to worship first, I invite you to reflect on what this past year has been. How has love endured through us? How has love been shared through us? We have all of our outreach. All you have to do is pick up that uh, booklet our, of our annual report and read through that. And look at the many, many different ways that we have shared God's love out into the world. We haven't held on to it. Even as we have been scared to death to try to figure out how to do things differently, even as we have been irritated as heck to put on masks or to, to come or not to come. I mean, just this week, I had COVID tests to make sure I could be here today. It's like, come on. But that is our life today. And that's, again, with, with this uh, reading from the 1 Corinthians, love does not insist on its own way. And I thank all of you for not insisting on your, on your own way. Because things are so different. And it's not like any of us would want. But you know what? Love endures. And we have thrived through that. And I thank every single one of you for that. As we start looking ahead... We know that that love will be with us. We know that God will be walking with us every single moment. And we also know our call is to thrive, not just endure. We will do that, but to thrive through all of this. To find those challenges and know that God is with us and we have a call still to share that love out into the world. So today... May we know that all the faith, hope, love, all of those, all of those will endure. But through all of it, it is God's love that strengthens us. God's love that empowers us to go out into the world and serve. So we might not just endure, but we might thrive. Thank you. Thank you for enduring. Thank you for helping us thrive. And thank you for being willing to adjust even on the fly as we do. But most of all, thank you for sharing God's love from this place out into the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
please stand as you are able, and now let us affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed, found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 9 of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Eighty-three of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 10 of your bulletin. We will read responsively, and you may stand, sit, or kneel as you're comfortable. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Bishop Kim, for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our President and Congress, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town of Castle Rock, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirmed, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, especially those in need of healing, those who care for them, and those who need God's strength and guidance. Rita, Jin, Steve and Marcia, David and Jessica, Michael C, Kendra S, Joe, Pat E, Rebecca, Joman and Kin, Carrie, Judy, Debbie, Stephanie, Brent, Don and Linda, Sally C, Bob, Mary Ann, our military families, law enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners and those in nursing facilities. Today we pray for those affected by the coronavirus and its variants, the healthcare workers who care for them and all who are sick. 
We pray for moisture in this time of drought in Colorado and the West, and for all those who lost their homes and were affected by the Marshall and Middle Fork fires near Boulder. Let us pray to the Lord. For those celebrating birthdays this week, Alice Hupp, Grant Soroki, Don Carlos, Emily Huskins, and Kathy Collins. And for those with anniversaries, Rye and Sandra Brownrigg. Let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Today's altar flowers have been given by Karen Karouche in Thanksgiving of Family. Mm. Holy and gracious God, we do lift these and all the prayers of our hearts up to you, knowing that you are constantly doing more than we could ever ask or imagine. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everyone, both here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. God's peace. Well, it is uh, great to see everyone this morning. We do welcome our visitors and our newcomers, both on Zoom and here in the sanctuary. Um, great to see everyone. Uh, today at 8.30, so about a half hour after this service, we will have the annual meeting. Uh, we'll be both here and on Zoom. So if you want to go home, get comfortable, get a cup of coffee and all that, um, join us on Zoom. If not, you're welcome to stick around here as well. Also coming up... Um, we have our Lenten uh, Reflection Booklet. Um, if you signed up for those uh, reflections, those are due uh, Monday, I think it is, tomorrow, and all that. Uh, so please do get those in. I still got to get mine in as well. Um, if, I think there's still a few left, so if you'd like to sign up for one, even if you've taken one and would like another one, go, ahead, go right ahead and grab another one off of that list. So uh, help us with that. Uh, tomorrow is also the last day of the, uh, that we will be collecting funds for the Boulder Assistance Fund. Uh, the vestry has put up $2,500. We have another almost $1,500 from this congregation to go towards that. So on Tuesday, we'll get that check cut. After that, you are still more than uh, welcome to um, 
um, uh, contribute to that. And there's a website uh, or um, uh, there's a web address here where you can do that straight through the diocesan office. So we're not cutting it off. We're just not going to receive it. We have to get our check in. So we're going to do that uh, starting this year as well. Um, also, Wednesday, the 9th of February, we're having a Braver Angels event. That'll be an online event. It's um, for depolarization within. It's a way to kind of, uh, Braver Angels is a, 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 car, um, a community that start wanting to bring both sides together, if you will, make sure that we can um, have conversation, uh, healthy con conversation across the divides, whatever that divide might be. And so this one's a little bit more of doing our internal work, working internally and in kind of what, is the, what's, what are those trigger points for me that makes that conversation move from listening to defending and all that. So please join us for that. That'll be a great uh, um, conversation Wednesday uh, the 9th, and that'll be online at, uh, I think it starts at 6.30, yes. So join us for that. Next Saturday, we have Holy Trails, our outdoor hiking Eucharist. And that'll be up at uh, May, uh, Hidden Mesa, the west trailhead, the west end of, uh, trailhead. It's uh, The directions are in here, and we if you need uh, uh, clearer directions, let us know, and we can make sure you get there. And also, uh, we have a new save the date for our cam parish camping trip. That'll be now Ju uh, July 29th through the 31st, so that last weekend in July. Um, if you see Kerry Tyler, thank him. He has been up every single week at midnight on Wednesdays trying to get us a group site. <laughs> and literally for the last probably six weeks, he's been trying, and our date has moved every single week. Those things go so quick, but he, we got Sylvan Lake for that weekend, last weekend in, in July. So that'll be a great camping trip. And again, a huge thanks to Kerry Tyler for uh, making sure we could uh, reserve one of those. Any other announcements that need to be made? All right, and again, do please join us for the annual meeting uh, following this service. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy known have we given thee. And now we continue with Eucharistic Prayer C, found on page 369 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 13 of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us a way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit. Now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to, to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
And now we continue with the post-communion prayer, found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 20 of your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be careful as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Be alert and hesitant, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.